All right, you are here, the first on a few sections on attacks on system management mode. So this particular attack is going to be cache misconfiguration and the defense setting SMRRs. Let's see what that means. Well, we need to refresh you a little bit on some stuff about caching and how it's managed on Intel systems. So caching is available in all operating system modes, including system management mode. And typically what are used to configure caching are some MSRs called memory type range registers, MTRRs. So it's a special type of, MT of MSR that has a form like this. You've got a physical base and you've got a physical mask. The base is gonna say what type it is and then it's gonna have an address. And then the mask is used to define the range that it covers. Now, typically these are going to be configured by the BIOS to allow for a fast startup but the operating system can configure them as well. Now, while there's a bunch of different types that can be used in those MTRRs, we're going to focus only on the one that was discussed in the attacks in 2009. It was first reported by some French government researchers and later by the Invisible Things Labs folks who discovered it independently and found out from Intel that someone had already beat them to it. So how does this write back the WB work? Well, write back caching is basically trying to reduce the amount of traffic between the processor and the memory. And so reads come from the cache lines on cache hits. Writes are performed back into the cache and they are not immediately flushed or written to memory. If there's a read or a write miss, that'll cause a cache fill. And if there's any sort of modified line caused by writes and things like that, it is going to eventually be written back to memory. Obviously you have to have memory coherency but uh, it's going to be at some later time. Simply put, for our purposes, we can just think of it like if a memory range has been defined as write back caching, the CPU will do its best to always use cache version of things. It's going to read from cache, it's going to write to cache, and it's mostly not going to write that cache value back to RAM, except at some particular times we don't care about. So DeFlow had pointed out that there's a problem with the coherency because the CPU is accessing and operating on the cache values, whereas the protection mechanism for SMRAM, they were mostly dealing with compatible SMRAM in the context of this 2009 talk. So think of the protection mechanism, meaning the D-lock and, well, just the D-lock bit, I guess. So that protection mechanism, the D-lock, is in the MCH at the time, PCH now. So here's what things looked like. You had your CPU and its cache, and you had SMRAM with the D-lock, which is basically saying this is locked down, it's going to translate to video memory, it's not going to translate to RAM. System management interrupt is triggered, and then SMRAM becomes available. So you're in system management mode now, and therefore this decodes to SMRAM instead of video memory. That access, that uh, invocation of the initial code is going to lead to that code being cached in the cache. When you resume out of SMM, that code can still be in the cache and you know even though the D-lock has been locked back down. So now if an attacker writes to you know nominally SMRAM or whatever it takes to hit the same cache line, then the next time that the CPU enters into SMM, it's going to prefer to use the cached copy because the attacker has marked that particular range as write back and the CPU is going to say, oh, that's write back memory. I'm going to use, I've got a hit on the cache, so I'm going to use the copy from the cache. But that can mean that it is the attacker's code that is being executed from cache rather than the original system management interrupt handler. And you can see how it wouldn't take much to redirect control flow. That attacker's code really just needs to be a jump somewhere outside of SMRAM where they've already staged some attacker's code and then they don't have to worry about this protection whatsoever. So the fix for this was that Intel created some other MSRs called System Management Range Registers, SMRRs. They have a fizz base and a fizz mask just like MTRRs. And basically they are going to override whatever the MTRRs say. They're gonna take preference and precedence and so you know, the BIOS and SMM can set what they want the caching strategy to be for SMM, and then these SMRRs will take precedence. Additionally, the SMRRs can only be written to when the processor is in SMM, so that makes it so that there's not any, you know, trivial opportunities to rewrite them. So the SMRs look like this, basically the same as MTRRs. You've got a type, you've got a base, and you've got a mask, which essentially sets out the range.
So whenever the processor, as long as these are you know valid and enabled, then whenever the processor is an SMM, they will use whatever type was specified in the SMRRs. And there therefore only needs to be one SMRR, whereas MTRRs can cover a bunch of different ranges. These are basically just like, this is what's used if you're in SMM as a CPU execution mode. And so whenever the system is not in SMM, if you try to read from the ranges specified by SMRRs, you're just gonna get you know, invalid data like Fs, writes to it are straight up ignored. And when you're outside of SMM, the memory type effectively is uncacheable. So it really doesn't matter because the writes are ignored, but that's how it behaves. Now, some older systems don't actually support SMRs, so you do have to check an MSR to find out if the MSRs are there. So the IA32 MTRR Capabilities Register uh, tells you about you know, other capabilities, but specifically bit 11 is what's going to tell you if SMRs are supported on this particular system. Now, SMRs started as a non-architectural register on the earliest systems and then eventually became an architectural IA32 SMRR register. So, of course, you always need to double check for your data sheets what the actual MSR number is. In particular, because read, write, everything, if you try to read some MSR and it's not valid, it may crash your system. All right, so that was our next attack, which was applicable to both CSEG and TSEG cache misconfiguration, specifically marking the SMM range as right back, and then the defense for that is SMRRs. Well, you're done now with SMM write protection, actually, because that was the last sort of fundamental mechanism for write protecting SMM, and you've seen a little bit of the attacks. But let's keep chucking and see some more attacks.